in. Yes, yes, yes. We are back. We are back. You are tuned in to the Last Mile Radio right here on Serious XM. Kev, e is about to go down in a major way right now, babe. I got, I got to give a little brief background on who we got in the building right now. Yes, you do. Oh, my goodness. So you probably seen him on TV. You probably even heard him slapping in your speakers because this Emmy-nominated actor is also a dope musical artist and poet. You probably even seen him in your neighborhood because he's definitely a real one and is really for the people and with the people. If you're a fan of the popular show Mayans MC, you know him as Coco. We got the big dog, Richard Cabral, in the building with us today. Richard, man, welcome to the Last Mile Radio. Now, of course, thank you for having me here. It's been a minute. Um, We've been trying to make this happen for a while, so I'm glad it finally happened. So excited to have you in here, man. Seriously, so excited. I feel like we are already tight like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's beautiful, man. Everything's happening in divine order, as you said earlier. Absolutely, man, absolutely. Well, man, thank you for having us, man. So serious. So get, getting into this, man, we want to start off. We, we always like to start off with the journey. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Want to yeah. start off with the journey, and I know you've had a hell of a journey. Something that right. I can relate to personally, but I want to hear from you, man. Let let let's go through the journey, man. Yeah, and, and I think you know where we're at, and just you know honoring the work that you guys have done. You know, specifically for me, like because people hit me up all the time to like do interviews, but I say no, like and mm-hmm. not just for just not just to say no. It's because it's the reason, right? And there's a reason why I'm here, and it's like you guys honor that that prison reform space. You know, for right. me, people could word it however you know. But where I come from, it's honoring that. And that's why I said, yes. So I'm going to start right there. Right. And we're, we're going to I'm going to take you on this prison journey. Right. And then we'll get to where you started. But it's that right. What most people don't understand that are outsiders coming into this world, that there is reasons why um, that their children you are given life terms in California. Right. That they're like, wow, that that hap- yeah, it's been happening. Right? right. That there's these laws and these these the systems and this, that that are designed to keep black and brown children you know behind these bars and i was you know it's not even it's not a victim right because like i i feel that i grabbed what they were trying to make us victims and i took it as a strength right but this is the circumstances and it was very hard my growing up in east los angeles that's where my family migrated from from mexico Mm -hmm. and i say los angeles east los angeles is like any other broken community in the united states period right um um public schools where's where i i entered and my family comes from a broken home alcohol right i think alcohol was the biggest one and i think alcohol Mm kind of it doesn't matter what color you are right alcohol will destroy any family it has no there's no color lines so i think my grandfather being an abusive alcoholic kind of set the tone right um and my mother and would kind of just follow the same steps right and it's just a a, a broken child that does not or does not fix it just continues the brokenness that's kind of what happens and so you know my father leaving this story i I tell you is 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 i feel is a story of many in this in in, in broken communities my stop my father leaving at two years old what i feel will kind of change the trajectory of it right and my mom's alcoholism um kind of just being the trajectory of what my childhood would be, right? So, um, broken home. I, I I seen violence. I seen my uncles were the ones that raised me. They're gang members, right? In LA, uh, specifically in Los Angeles, gangs have been around for since the 1940s, right? So this Damn. thing, 1940s. This is just what it is. And and so these things is part of our culture. You get me? I don't. We don't know anything else. My uncles would be the ones that raised me. My uncles will start going to prison since the 1970s. Will be involved in gangs since the 1970s and start their incarceration in the 1980s. So I would follow. That's just what happens, right? What leader? What, right. what what's gonna happen to these children? Whoever leads the child, that's what's gonna happen. So, I, I would too. My my first uh, um the first age I would get incarcerated would be at thirteen. It was petty theft. I always say that you could follow the child, right? It's it, it, it's when you when you see a child that is to be institutionalized, you could see it. It doesn't it doesn't start from like oh he just did a life sentence, right? right, right and right. for me, it was petty. It, my my first crimes was petty theft, graffiti, um things of that sort, right? Which would ultimately lead into my incarceration. But that changed for me. Go, being incarcerated at, at thirteen years old, that would change like. Now I felt a part of something, and that's the messed up thing to say that being at my ho- in a broken home, it makes you feel like you're not a part of it, right? It makes you feel unloved. So the f- 
first place that I could feel loved and connected, and that was that that was jail, straight up. That was jail, and that's when I realized that the that my my messed up life was much bigger that my, was much bigger than me, and that others in LA County. That's the first time I like growing up in East LA too. Like you're very segregated, mm-hmm. what people don't know, right? And Definitely. like and, and for in East LA, I there's no other cultures. There's nothing but Mexicans. So the first time I got introduced to the black culture was through Los Padrinos Juvenile Hall. Mm. Huh. My way of and from 13 years old to I was 27, I was incarcerated. Let me just like all, wow. all the other stuff is fine, right? But and that I'm really coming to terms with, right? I've been out for 15 years, and I was like, and the mess thing about this the, this system, right? When you come out of trauma, anything, you don't have time to think about it, right? You just have to go. So I never really realized what happened to me. That's but deep. from 13 to I was 27, I was incarcerated. Like one stretch or no. in and out. No, but you don't cut you. It's a culture. It's a lifestyle. You right. get me? Yeah. You're yeah. in, right? And Not if 100%. you're in every year, that's it. What do you know? It's gangs and prison. Right. That become your reality. That's it. Well, Right. And, and not only that, but when you're traumatized young at home, and then you by go, your family, and then you're trauma to you take again, one trauma to another. And again, right. you you and accept again. only what did I do? What did we do? We accept one trauma setting for another trauma setting. Right. right. Yeah, because prison, in my opinion, it's trauma. It is not designed to. Re- we we were able to accomplish something that, in my opinion, was surprising, and that's create a safe place within a very toxic environment. But then you get deeper. It's children. Yeah. Right. Cal- we're taught this California, baby. Welcome to California where we house, where we cage up children. Right. My best friend got life at 15. That's facts. He's still in there. Sammy yep. Espinosa. That's mm. facts. That's facts, right? Yep. I fought a 35 year to life sentence at 20. My mind wasn't even developed to understand what that meant. Mm. And we don't give the opportunity in marginalized communities to develop your brain. Yeah. You're just, you, you're, you mesh and you're just like, what? I'm, what, what do you mean? I, I'm going to, you, I, I'm I'm facing 35 years to life. I'm 20 years old. What do you mean? You, you what do you mean? Oh yeah, okay. But we're men, and you and you harden up. Right. That's you another be, thing that make it worse. That. You better take that. Because that's what they teach you us. They take... teach us that's what, how we yeah. supposed to respond to that. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's that. You know, it's just like it's that's the messed up thing that you people expect us to like. You we didn't make these laws. That's the thing. We didn't make these laws. Right. No other country does this to children, right? No other country is perfect, but they don't house it. They don't. They don't take kids and house them, and, and you know, whether they're thirteen well, years old to keep them. Bro, I was I at thir- not even that. Like I, you know, you know what happens? You want me to tell you know what happens to a child that's institutionalized at a very young age? They put a wall in front of you, and that's your that's your window. Hmm. Yeah, you get me psychologically. What? You, let me take you. Let me take you. Law. Lawmaker, law decider, let me put you in a damn cage like you put these cages in cages for twenty four hours, and let me see how you feel after. Right. Yeah. Straight up, you want let's let's talk about children. Let's just it's not even about adults. You know, adults sometimes are lazy. Talk about the children. There's thou there's hundreds of thousands of children right now, and I was one of those and I was one of those those kids. I was one of those childs. I was I was, I was that child right there. Same. I went down at seventeen you know? and did a total of nine straight. Like yeah. from from the age of seventeen to twenty six, I went from juvenile hall to CYA to prison. Shit. For my eighteenth birthday, that's what they ended up doing. Four days after my eighteenth birthday, my birthday present was going to the big house. You know what Sit. I'm saying? The prison. Sit. So I, I definitely agree. They definitely warehousing this very very early, and it, it, it's it's super messed up because that becomes normalized. And like you say, we adapt to it, and, and to the point where. Sometimes it even gets seen as, as like a badge of honor. That's how twisted it and got to where now I feel like for some, it, it becomes a badge of honor. Like I went through that. I did that. You know what I mean? And you're, but you're talking, you're talking about what type of communities are these, right? right. These are the communities. How do we gotta, get to that point? How, like these are communities, right, that are designed to strip arts from the communities. Right. That are designed to make our communities dumb. Let me just start, lick it. Put children of different countries together. Really, mm. test them. Right. Test public school children for different countries, any country, black, brown, it doesn't matter. And see the what how they, our children are dumb, I'm sorry to say, that are raised in public school. Unless you have, a pri- unless you have money for a private education, which most black, brown, and kids in, these, in this America don't. Right. They're sucked into a public school system. And those public school systems have failed our children. 
and no, those are the children that get busted and 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 then get incarcerated. Not only that, but the actual schools are set up with metal detectors. They look like security. prisons. The, 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 the school like to prison. Prisons. The school to prison pipeline is so real because, like, and, and like you said, since as early as thirteen, I remember my first run-ins with the law around that time as well, right? And what that does is tell you, you know, this is what you're meant for. This is what you're bred for. Like, like, like the schools, like you said, metal detectors, even just the design of the schools. If you look at the courtyards and things like that, it looked like a damn prison, like legit. Yeah. yeah. The cafeterias with the metal tables and all right. that type of stuff, right. like it looked like. So that's that's literally mentally conditioning us, you know, to prepare and get ready for that to the point where again it becomes normal. Well, up until recently which the laws have slightly changed right but still the united states is the only country in the world that incarcerates its youth for life without parole it's the it's only one crazy. We grow. And, and and in, fact, right, good. in fact it's, fucking, it's crazy it's it is actually <laughs> banned by international law and it's considered a, almost torture so, it is torture <laughs> so the idea that that there's that there's these that there's this kind of institutions in the united states yes. that will sentence youth to life yes which we talked about before the show briefly and one of my best friends was one of those guys mm. you know and it's unbelievable but mm. it still happens yeah yeah there, in fact in detroit right now wayne county the juvenile lifers that are going back up for resentencing hearings are just getting resentenced to life mm. and these are mostly mm. black men that's right. it yeah that's it like so, that, and and that it's it's like we when when we have these big discussions and these big you know it come together's right but it's just like like really is it is it what's really the problem that they're coming out or is it really the problem that these laws that kind of did this to these communities and it's 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 that like I think we're asking the wrong questions right how do how do we get here I think that's one thing that always gets <laughs> well, overlooked. How do you? I, I like, can't, how do we get here? I, I can't. I can't. It, I can't negate the fact of responsibility and accountability. Right. But how do we get yes. here to be to normalize yeah. these actions and this thought pattern? Right. Like it wasn't overnight. No. Like conditioning is so real. And when you think about it, it's literally hundreds of years of conditioning that goes yes. into this. We talking about like since the conception right. of America. Like, like I'm this. I'm on this whole California read right now. Right. I'm writing. I'm, I'm reading this this um book that's barely been published in English. Um, it was it was um originally um. Um, written in Spanish, but if like over uh, 150 years or something, it's barely, and it's the story of California, right? And when mm -hmm. you really peel back, like how everybody came here, right? Like just peel that back, right? Like with the blacks, like they weren't originally from, they were coming from the South, be running from all the, the lynching and whatever. And, and that's kind of like when you really like, and they, oh, and where, where did they have to go? Los Angeles pushed them to the south. Right, right? from the Great Migration yeah. after no, slavery. No, 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 South Los Angeles. South, right. south Los Angeles. Angeles. I'm saying from the Great Migration after slavery, how we how we ended up on the west coast, if right. we will. Right, and, and, and how right, and, right. and how it just like, even the city of Los Angeles, how the the, the, the redlining. Right, still mm -hmm. going on today, redlining, yeah. like, gentrification. Like, is it really a, yeah. a trip why only certain parts of the city kind of have gun violence and the same, like, don't? Like, it's, it's. I'm just saying, like, when you peel, it's right there in front of your eyes, baby. Like, yeah. you don't got, you don't, it's, it's not a mystery. This shit ain't fucking. It, it's a saying. <laughs> if you change the design, you change the conditions. Change the design yep. to change the conditions. So talking about this topic, the two of you are sitting here mm -hmm. as products of this system, mm -hmm. but in a very different place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so, products of overcoming the system. There you go. Well, okay. Exactly. But the, the question I'm going to pose to both of you is how did you get here? Right. Versus how did we as a country get to where we are? Right, love it. How did the two of you get here? Because something changed. Right. Whether it was community support, <clears throat> you found somebody to be a mentor while right. you were still in prison, and, or fill in the blank. I'm going to throw right. in something out there. Did you read a lot? I did. I did, definitely. For sure. I, I, understanding yes. is going to be huge in my answer, for sure, for sure. Once I understood systemic oppression mm -hmm. and how that mm -hmm. worked, and mm -hmm. like you said, how did we get to this point? I felt not, I felt like a sucker. I'm like I yeah, took the I took the, the veil hook off, line the, and sinker. Off. The, once the veil's off, the veil's off. Right. It, it, if you're a sucker that goes back to it, then you're just us because it's work. Let me just. Right. How did you get here? I'm gonna tell you how. I just barely met you today. I'm gonna tell you how you got here. Talk one, to one. Me. Through hard motherfucking work. That's how you got here. I ain't never lied. I ain't never lied. Most definitely it was hard work. And, and it, it continuous. Yeah. It don't hard stop. work. The work don't stop. That's Until a we big die. <laughs> part of how we get here. You could have the right verbiage, the right edge, you know, but if you don't know how to grind out here, 
That it's part of it, but the but word the but, thing and, too, though. And, and, and ripping, ripping the lies. I think kind. Of, I'm just want to piggyback on that. For sure, for ripping sure. the lies. Like when you really find out what what it is. Like, am I really just a like a dumb Mexican in this, or or is it that what they're telling me? Hmm. Right. Right. Am I right. just really this, or did my people come from ancient times? Right. Right. Because that's the real story. If you want to know about shit. me? I'm, yeah. I'm Indian, bro. Yeah. Mexican. I'm a, I know. I'm. I'm in touch with my. My ancestors built those great, those great empires down in Mexico. That's my people. Yeah. Right. Just like if you go down, I know that. Just like you're. Everybody has that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody doesn't Absolutely. matter. Black, white doesn't matter. You have these sto- real stories. I say that once you you want to be a better American. I'm from Mexico, but just we're, we're an American. Say. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. <laughs> You know, but if you want to be a better American, you should know who you are. You could probably be a better American. That part. Right. Uh, another matter. thing, too, I want to piggyback on this before it slipped my mind. One of the things you said about work, I think it's real important to understand the hard work, but what you're working for. The purpose behind Because we work. worked back then, too. Is that, that, you feel it, what I'm gang saying? Work. The gang work is that I always say that. We took that. that when, and once you really understand, but it, that energy and that work to, to, to get you, it took energy and work to get me to prison. Right, man. It Come took on, energy man. and work to get me in prison. Come on, man. But when I understood that energy and work could be shifted into really understanding who I am, that's kind of that's kind of where and and then boom and then you open up to the universe. For me, it's opening up to the universe. Me too. I, I definitely well, relate to that. Well, having having worked in social enterprise, uh-huh. which we're going to talk about in our intro. At oh, some for point. sure. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed over the years is people that have been through extreme adversity mm-hmm. that have the veils been lifted mm-hmm. and they no longer believe the lies are the hardest working employees that I've ever encountered. Mm. Damn straight. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. obviously I talk about myself in that picture too, being a formerly homeless heroin addict mm. and a product of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Product of San Francisco. That, yeah. I don't know. That's, <laughs> you know, the city and, get and yeah. so, <laughs> so I will say that there's a, a motivation that also comes from a little bit of imposter syndrome mm. because yep. I'm always like, do they know? Mm, right. Do they know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes mm-hmm. I'll tell my story in reverse just because I want to get the good part out first. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. See where I am now. But I think one of the things that comes to mind when you guys are talking about this, you put in the work, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you were able to leave the situations you were in mm-hmm. because probably you were respected because you mm-hmm. put in the work. Right, 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 right. I mean, I, I, th- I don't think you exempt from that neither, though, no. in the least bit. No. But so when you got to that pivotal point, Maybe what was that pivotal point for each of you, Richard especially? Right. I've heard I've heard ease a and, number of times, and, and then you next. Yeah, <laughs> that pivotal point, like what happened? Because something clearly changed. It it was a culmination of the reading, right, and right. the learning, right. Right. and un- unveiling right. the, the oppression, right. But you all obviously must have had other people influencing yeah. you in a positive way. Oh, for sure, def- for sure. And like for me, my story. If you if if you know my story, you can't say my story without Father Greg of Homeboy Industries, right? And it was a blessing that he was in here today. But it's really that. Like for me, like what what the embodiment of that is like. Cause this is to Father Greg says there is no hopeful child that becomes a gang member, and you could it's you could there's so many ways you could you know it's so layered like that, but for me that's one hundred right. There's no ho- and then and I say that if that is true, then there's no hopeful child that becomes a drug addict and alcoholic. Right. Mm. A child that is truly loved and nurtured and told you I love you at all the right times, right? Shit happens, but like like they're why would they end up running to death? Right. Everybody that I know, really, they had some some shit happen. Not right? trying to fill a void. So whether it was daddy, fucking sexual assault, right? These traumas, these deep traumas, like, and and that was something that I would always notice. Some of the most craziest motherfuckers in the hood were some of the most traumatized motherfuckers, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. My homeboy Chino, his him, like he was that motherfucker went to YA, like over and over, right? Right. Like it's just his mind was just turned to like, he he almost stabbed me when I was little. I remember, and, and I swear, I swear, I was like thirteen. Which I almost stabbed me, right? But and I remember when I heard his dad used to smoke PCP. Mm. Mm. Okay, like in front of them, right? right. And you're just like, what? What happened to you and, know? And what for those that, that don't know, PCP is like a hallucinogen. I believe it's like yeah, a it's an fluid or It was one yeah. of, like they used to call it um, Superman. Like you would turn like the Credible Hulk because you're mm-hmm. in back in the '80s when that PCP was PCP. Like especially in Los yeah, Angeles, yeah. You, it, yeah, yeah. You there's videos. You go on YouTube videos. You need like five, six sheriffs taking down oh, one yeah. man on PCP. Legit. Well, yeah, and legit. the long term damage it does to you. I, some of the craziest guys I was in jail and rehab with were were doing PCP. That was their thing. Yeah, and yeah. they would do it and go out and. 
do crimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? You know? It was, and it does long-term damage to your brain. Right, right, you right, know? right, yeah. Being or seeing that as a child. Yeah. I mean, I will still contend that having a violent alcoholic in the house, yeah. there's nothing quite like that for mm. trauma. Mm. Um, mm. And I know that's my grandfather's story as mm. well. Mm. So mm. hearing that, I was like, you know, it get, you get emotional right, about it. Right, Because right. it resonates. Yeah. So so going back to the question, what was that pivotal and, moment? And, and yeah, and, and, I, and it was the love going start, you know, as I started with G, right? And what G did is like, it's that right like my dad leaves let's just it's me right my dad leaves and my mom doesn't give a fuck right why why didn't she give a fuck right because she's bringing in men that i have no connection with most of the time alcoholics drug addicts right so it, it, and so when father g comes into my life like this man like when he when he gave me those first 20 dollars that in that secret handshake and said i love you hmm. like i was like what the fuck like, what do you mean you love me? And like, and you're just like, oh, fuck. Like, and he's not, I love you, son. Like, we're right here. And you're just like, fuck, that's all I've been wanting. That's all I've been wanting was to fucking have somebody like, no matter, that's it. I'm a father of four now, right? And and I'm a great father. My son, he's a 20, I got a 21 year old. My baby's five, right? My tw- He goes to the art center, one of the greatest art schools in, in the United States, period, right? He got accepted to that shit, right? He is on set. And it's, and it's, but it's, it's that, right? I know, like, like I know what it is to be there for them in a real way, right? Like they and like that's all I wanted. I just wanted somebody to be there for me. Like I got you, son. Like you're my son. And it wasn't until meeting Father Greg that that truly that I, I it's that man. It wasn't homeboys is a space. He created a space. Mm-hmm. But what father what that place is a man. Mm-hmm. Homeboy Industries is a man. Is a man that 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 embodies. And up to this day, he's humble about his right. He's buried like almost 250 kids. Yeah, man. Think about that, right? Till this day, like just out there, just you know, with us, and and so anyhow, that there was love, and I think the first demonstration through that, right? The first one, because love came in many forms after that, right? But it was Father Greg that showed me that, and I wasn't my worst mistake. That we, that I was not my worst mistake. Right. Do Do you feel like that moment? Well, so were you already like? On, on on a progressive path, should I say? Do you feel like you already had your purpose in alignment at that point, or is, is that something that helped you find? You it? know, you talked a little bit about the music, and, and and that's like the music and my story. Like, and I that's why I asked you about books, right? Mm-hmm. Like books, that was my shit. Like that was my gateway out. That's dope. Books. My mom used to come and give me books or send me books. My mom did do that for me when I was in jail, but that kind of fucked me up though too. Cause I was like, yeah, you would come and visit me, but like, are you? You're more of a mom when I'm in jail than when I am outside. Hmm. Right, but whatever, whatever books and and and, and it was I I was a storyteller since I was very young, so it's always it, and I used to write poems. I used to just write my poems, and I think there's something. I gotta up, say, you definitely a dope ass poet for sure. I'm a poet. I gotta I'm a say poet. It. I'm a, it's all go ahead. Well, and we talked about that as well. I mean, I think the the idea around incarceration even is to disconnect people from that part of their yes. Their personality. Yes, look at California prisons. It's black and white. You yep. you go color. You 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 lose your sense of color. They 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 take out all senses from you, bro. Yep, we're, we're black and white. I spent we spent years in California prison. What are the colors? What are the colors? Shit, gray, uh-huh. black, white for sure. Blue. Like you said, and that's it. Blue, and that's yeah, it. and the prison blue, and, and, and not just and a, a, a certain type. Oh, and then green for sure. <laughs> that green wall. <laughs> well, and uniforms. You get me? So, so it's that. That's pe- what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> so so. Pivoting, because yeah. you know we've—I got a time check yeah, already. Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want—I want to hear about your success story. Yeah. Like, you know, it's and it's, and I say this like, yeah. not in an right. in an ego building way for mm-hmm. you, but to really share. Like, so you met Father Greg, right? And then something changed, right? Dramatically right. for you, right? And, because and, yeah. what you're doing now, and it's the acting, right? What gave me this this space that that I've seen the world was the acting. Right. That acting happened at the bakery. I took the opportunity and it was I asked when that happened. Right. It was like, if these people could believe in me, how can I not believe in myself? Come on, man. That's yep. it. Right. Yep. That's it. When that opportunity comes and if you're a dummy and you don't take it, you're just a dummy. You didn't take it. That opportunity might never come. That's facts. When that shit came, I, I took that. I told Father Gay, I'm changing my trajectory. I don't want to be a baker no more. I want to go to acting class. But I knew that it was work. Right. And that was it. That was it. Well, you want to know how to be an actor? Go to acting class. Right. Straight That's like it. that. It's facts. 
Yeah. You want to know how to be a host or go to host class? How to know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how to be a produ- well, go to production class? Pra- pra- <laughs> it's, it's pra- practice and discipline. But it's discipline. It's like, well, yeah. like for me, acting. What acting? Yeah, but who did? There's actors in front of me. The uh, uh, Scorsese, um, DiCaprio, Pacino, Meryl Streep. Right? What did they do? And just do it. Right. It's not hard. It's really not right? right, and especially right now, like especially if you have this, right? And you don't know how to get. You're getting the wrong information, dummies. You're spending too long on whatever Instagram. social media, whatever. <laughs> you should be getting the right information, filling your mind with with the right things versus the dumb things. Right. It's a choice. Yeah. You have a choice to you have a choice yeah. to be dumb or you have a choice to be smart or you have it's a choice. Right. You have a choice to grind or you have a choice to be lazy. Right. So, so but you must have gotten at least the baseline of feeling safe from at homeboys. Yes. So that you could actually chase your For dreams. sure. I swear to God. I swear to God. Because if that space where you could create this space for these individuals through wherever you're at, if you could create a space for an individual coming out of a traumatic situation like prison, you could for sure, there's for sure possibility for change. Right. For sure. So what was it like when you got your first role? How did that feel? It, it's, it's, it's one of the most, it's one of the most like... N- it, it, it just makes it's, it's not normal right this shit is not normal my life is not normal let me just start here you want to know what this is my life is not normal why because from where my life started at to where i'm at today the shit doesn't make sense right right it, th- that's it's it's trying you to defy the odds but but the, it's still in me right the all it's still you, i don't lo- i still wake i still think about the trauma i still think about the prison yard i still think like that right when i'm in a confined space i can't help why because i was spent years you can't take it away right, right. now it's here fuck it's like an it's like a, it's like you've been at once you once you're in once you, you can't switch back right it's having you. You're. It's like a. You have a missing. It's. A, it's just part of you. Like now. a scar. Right. Like a real scar. It's like a heart mummer. It's car. It's part of you. Right. And you have to be real with that, right? That I can't. Like, why do I flop out on my partners? Mm. That's what's gonna happen. Right. Get ready, baby. Get ready for that, and that's it. Like, but but I and I've managed. I've managed. I'm grateful that I've managed to hone it down and to create, have a beautiful acting career. Right. I've been able to take what I've learned in my life and transform it into acting, and that's where I'm at. I've traveled the world. So, I, I want to ask some about that. Right. So, like acting as a form of expression for show, for show. Do you feel like that allowed you, you know, to express yourself and, and process your past a bit? Like, how does that play a role, or has it played a, a role, it, it, like a therapy? It's, for you? It's, it's it's everything, right? But what I tell you guys, right? What I tell not just you, right? It's like you want to know where this Emmy name, Emmy nomination came from. Talk to me. It's from that trauma. Hmm. But they don't want to honor that, right? So is that what comes to life on the screen? All the is time. that what you're tapping it's pain. into? It's pain. Where hmm. does my pain? It's not nobody else's pain. It's my pain. Where does my pain come from? Being institutionalized. Man. That's it. That You cannot talk. I cannot. You could have whatever, right? But I'm going to look at, if I know your story, that shit changed you. Hell yeah. yeah. And, it will, and you'll never be the same. That shit changed me from 13 to 27, and I'll never be the same. Right. And it's okay. Yeah. That's what people like, oh, I'm no homie, you're not good, actually, bro. You're not good. It's okay to not a, be okay. It's a, go to a therapist, homie. Get yes. your ass to a therapist, bro. You're not good. Those years incarcerated fucked you up. Yeah. Go to a therapist, bro. And no, and no one gives a fuck out here about. No one cares about your feelings. Welcome to welcome to the world. No one gives a fuck about your feelings. Yeah. Now nah, that's real life. <laughs> well, so, but that's real life. Hold on, though. It's, it's so on us it. to take control so, and, and, and to take the steps needed in order to progress and process this shit because that's real. But let's let's let's. Let's roll that back a little bit because with success also yeah. comes failure. Yeah. So what, what's it been like when you don't mm. get the role you really wanted? And, and, and how, how do you it, process man, I'm going to tell now. you like this. If you think about being an actor, you better have the toughest skin in this game. Hmm. This is fact. doesn't matter what actor you are. The not, uh, not Oscar nominee doesn't matter. You will have more fails than you have wins. That's facts. You will, you will get more. This is just this is a number game, baby. Acting's right. a number game. Well, but uh, until correct. you're just getting offers, until you're just that egg, you know. Right, but right, beyond right. that, you're just a number game. So for anyone that's trying to change their lives, right. though, that's dealing with failure, what did you do personally to get through those times? Because a lot of times, if we're being honest, one failure will set somebody all the way back. Right. Yeah, I didn't seen that for sure. I didn't definitely seen I, that that dude, discouragement just, and not being able to process that right and be resilient. Yeah, yeah. I mean, How do you I've stay watched, resilient? Yeah, I've watched, I like that. I've watched men in twelve step groups that have 
two plus decades of sobriety, sobriety. go out oh, over something oh, something tiny, yeah, one yeah. little failure. It, so what changed in me, your mindset? For me, everything, it's my spirituality. Okay. Straight up. That's what it is, right? My connection to my prayer, to my whatever, my my ancestors, right? Which is what, that's it. My connection to my higher source, as we say in the 12 step, right? That what, right. It's that. It's it's really embodying, embodying that, right? Taking that like, this is, this is fake, guys. This is not real, right? These are the masks that we put on. These are not, the, and like really understanding that, right? What is my... And that's it. Like, and me coming, co- being in touch with my roots helps me with that. Helps me navigate this weird ass world, right? That you got to put a face in. Who am I? Right. Because that. So in that, what would be your advice to other men that are going through this right, right. now? Because there's, there's so many people out there right. that get to that failure point, that inflection point and just give up. Right. Right. So it, how, it, what would you say to them to stop them from giving it, up? It's finding that thing that connects you to your inner, to your inner, to your inner source, to your inner power. And, and it's a lot of times it's not your mother and your father. Let me just, it's not your family. Right. Right. And you, it has to be you. It has to be you. Put yourself in a quiet space. If you're in the hood, go to a park, find that quiet space to just block out the rest of the noise. Cause only until you block out the noise, are you truly able to find who you are? Right. Mm. Yeah. And so talking about that, we talked a little bit about how you got here. Um, what, you know, you, you've been talking about art. We talked about music. W- what do you feel like your best contribution is to your community at this point? It's art. It's, it's in specifically music right now. Specifically, I'm starting a program that's bringing free music to, to Los Angeles communities. And what are those communities? They're black and brown kids. Right? When, when you say free music, you mean like a space to instruments, record? To instruments, okay, okay. instruments, music. No, yeah. no, this is not. You're going to learn how to play. Yeah. yeah. Because that is, is, is ancient. Hmm. The sound, it's not lyrics. I've done, I come from the rap world. It's not because people don't, they don't understand the words. They're very confused. But once you get that, in, that live instrument, that yeah. vibration, there's energy in that. I play guitar. I know my, my guitar right there. I, I know for you sure. Don't, I don't got to tell you. Definitely. Right? There's well, energy. I, I I love that you said that because one thing with that, right? One thing about playing an instrument, I don't got to say a word. If I play a B minor, you're going to know exactly how I'm feeling. Once I get the strumming this thing, you're going to know exactly the feeling. It's visceral. It exceeds, it supersedes More, and right logic. There. And I'm, I'm a saying? filmmaker, bro. I come it. from filmmaking, and it's not filmmaking. If I had the opportunity right now to do a film school or an in, for a, play, a, school, a music school, it, I got it's all music, instruments, music instruments, because it's instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Film, you got to set up the shot and the, and the trauma's happening instantaneously in these hoods and the kids need this in, right now right for me it's instruments yeah. well, uh, music school yeah so you're setting it up where East LA nice so you're doing it right from. right in your community where I'm from so Wrong. that's really for the people man I love it I love it and man. that's one of the things that I, I think we're gonna hear over and over again from people that are having successes is it's not just about what you did in your pivotal point in your in your life but what you're doing now. Now, now. And that give back. Now, right? Yeah, yeah. And the right give back, right? Because so many times you, 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 in this work, people want to get into this work. Be, know what this work is. This is not for the, you know, for the faint at heart. This is hard work. And, if you, don't, and, and if you go out there trying to save the world and you don't know how to address your energy, you're fucked. You're going to hurt yourself. Up. You're going to hurt yourself trying to do this work. Is that, the, is that the only program you're working with right now? Homeboys. Oh, and homeboys, oh, absolutely. Homeboy. I mean, I don't work, I mean, it, that's only that yeah it's i'm just doing my thing like i i because because i can't count on people man i can't fucking mm-hmm. count on people i'm from the streets i'm from here i'm from east l.a i function here i always got out of it i still function here but it yeah it, it, it's i have my crew and i know my crew what they could do and it, but we i think a lot of times we overthink stuff right we mm-hmm. a lot of times you just do it you do it and put it out and you know and, and then you will see what you know what what what, what the full circle of that is right like, Right now, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, what's next for you? I it's, I mean, the strike's over. I'm an actor. That's <laughs> my, the strike is over. Finally, like really, like Not real tough. that shit was like that was like oh man, like seven months. All right, cool. Like yeah, yeah, like I mean, that's my bread and butter, right? That's you know, I'm I'm in LA now. This is my this has been my career. I've been blessed to do this work just to be an actor for over a decade now. Right. That alone, like, and, right. and I appreciate my life, right? And I take those moments too, like, damn, bro, you used to be in a prison cell. You were doing a shoe term. Now Man. you're, 
now you're you know you're they're flying you first class to wherever right and it's it's that like but yeah i'm just grateful that you know i'm able to tap into what what i'm great at you know and right. and, and for me it's it's i did i came from music for me artistically it's merging my musical past with what i have been trained to do for over a decade uh-huh. in in the acting world as right. a trained performer so i mean having said that how would you advise people in terms of like finding their path? Because your path is acting in music, music, right? The arts, yeah, the arts of yeah, yeah. But I mean, mine might be business. Like, right. how do you, right. you know, we talked briefly about it, but how do you get people that you're working with to that point where they really find the thing that's going to change their lives forever? And I think it's like what Father Greg said in um the other episode is that it's that we're not here for people that need it. We're here for people that want it. Yeah, that part. Like, don't we like you have to want this shit, right? You got to want to be great. You got to want to be here. And if you want it bad enough, you will do the actions. Yep. That's it. And that's the thing. Even though we all come from the same communities, we're not all set up for the same thing. It's true. Right. It's it's that like oh bro you 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 thought you're an orange you're really an avocado <laughs> <laughs> straight up no I like that analogy though real talk because as we grow we get you to think step you're like into why identity. isn't it working God dad God why isn't it working and and, and I, I learned this from a ceremony this medicine this medicine man, medicine man down in Mexico told me he was like you've been what you you're watering it you're right there giving it all the love right right but it, it's it's you thought it was an orange right. But it's really an avocado. Hmm. You've been hanging out with a bunch of oranges, baby, but you're really an avocado. Yeah. Who are you? Hmm. That's the big, that's all this shit is who the fuck are you? Straight up. You want to know how to, who, find out who the fuck you are. (laughs) Yeah. I love that, man. Real (laughs) talk. So we're getting close to time. And I know, and I know E has a very specific question he asks every guest. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the way we close, we got to ask this last question. And this, this is kind of difficult, right? Because what I'm going to ask you is one thing. And it's so many things that could come to mind, right? right? But if you could change one thing in our current system today, what would that be and why? Oh yeah, and I mean it's housing children in prison. Like, yeah, like stop putting ch- kids in cages, right? Right, and and, and with that, why? Because they're our future. <laughs> Let me just start there, <laughs> right? Um, but it's not just that. I thought I've had, you know, and I was like, well, what else? Say they all right, you know, because it's that, it's that you have to think about it before you ask. Oh, her, you sure. have to answer. You were like, well, then what else? If they stop putting people in prison, then what? What are we gonna do? And it's like, I'm just going to brainstorm. Like, we're having a brainstorm session. If you didn't put these kids in, if you didn't put me in prison, right? What about you would have gave me, as soon as I got busted when I was 13 years old for graffiti, whatever minimal crime I got, mm-hmm. you gave me a therapist. You gave me a big brother. You, um, you brought arts to my life, maybe, right? And then you really try to see, like, my living conditions, right? Because most of these kids that are getting, getting busted, right? Mm-hmm. If you go to their house, more than likely it's fucked up, right? Yep. So it's like, Instead of just oh, fuck, lock them up, right? Instead of what you did to me, uh-huh. could you have helped me? And I believe truly you could have, right? You could have helped me. Right. That system, this system that we pay taxes to could have fucking helped me. Yeah. You could have gave me some, some, something, right? Instead of just. Right. Right. My home was fucked up. That's why, right? My mom didn't give a fuck, right? My dad was, you know, you wouldn't have came to my home. You would have seen it. You would have seen it. Right. You would have seen me laying on the floor. Right. You would have seen, you know, you would have and you would have been like, damn, like this kid might need help. So anyhow, that would be what, you know, what I would change and how we might be able to, you know, fulfill that change. Definitely. I want to I want to touch on something you said, too, because I think it's real important because sometimes people may not be able to fully understand this. Right. We got reasons and excuses. You know, the the, the reasons don't always excuse the action, but the reasons are so important because mm-hmm. the reasons can prevent the exacerbation mm-hmm. of what's truly at, mm-hmm. at the root of the mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. You feel what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you got That's some it. people that hear this is like, oh, just because that happened, that doesn't you right. It doesn't yeah, excuse yeah, 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 it, yeah, but, but it could be avoided. Yeah. Yeah. These reasons, once we lock in on these and rectify mm-hmm. this shit, mm-hmm. it can be avoided. Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. stop it from mm-hmm. reoccurring. Mm-hmm. We can stop mm-hmm. it from exacerbating. Mm-hmm. But it starts with you. Yeah. Absolutely. But it starts with you, right? Like, 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 that's it. That's it. And that's what, and I think that's what we're doing here as, as, as a collective. Man, real talk. 
Real okay. talk. Richard, man, I really want to really want to give you your flowers, right? One thing we do on the Last Mile Radio, dog, we give flowers. Mm. And pretty much what that stems from, man, a lot of times after somebody dies, you know what I mean? That's when you hear the good words. That's when you get the acknowledgments. And that's where you quite literally get the flowers on the grave. So I want to give you your flowers uh, while you can you, still bro. smell thank them, you, dog. You, you didn't you. Yeah, overcame right. a very powerful journey, uh, man. Uh, and, and what you represent for your culture, man, for the culture, what you represent, you feel what I'm saying? And in your neighborhood, dog, I'm sure it's inspiring so many different people to change the trajectory of their mm-hmm. lives and mm-hmm. now follow your footsteps yeah. so having the credibility that you have and stepping into your power the way you did i gotta give you your flowers bro Thanks, real brother. talk I appreciate that. i'll take those flowers yeah huh? absolutely yeah. and i appreciate you man me too thanks for coming on yeah of course yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you just heard this powerful conversation, powerful conversation with me and my boy Kev and the one and only Richard Cabral right here on the Last Mile Radio on Sirius XM. Stay tuned. We're going to be back shortly, y'all.